Welcome back. In this mini lesson we will learn about the so-called confidence intervals. So we will learn about how can we evaluate the probability that the true result lies within a given interval. In the previous mini lesson we derived a very important result that I would like to review now. So we derived that the variance in the mean value of the result of the Monte Carlo simulation is equal to the variance of the random variable divided by the number of samples. I would like to make sure that you understand the difference between these two values. The variance of the mean value of our result and the variance of the uh, random variable that we are trying to calculate. Let's take the example problem from the previous lesson, the calculation of the distance uh, that the neutrons that come out of fission reaction fly to the first collision. We know the probability density function for uh, sampling this distance. We know that it is an exponential function, so this is the probability density function for the distance. So during the simulation we will use this probability density function to sample the distance to the first collision. So for instance we will sample value here, next time we sample the distance it may fall here, next time it may fall here, then here, then here, here. If we sample a very large number of these values we will see that uh, the, the distribution of these values will match the probability density function. It's important to realize that the variance of these samples remains constant during the whole simulation. So there is some uh, average number, the mean distance of these samples, so it could be for instance uh, here the variance of the samples characterizes the uh, mean square of the distance of the samples from the true mean value. Therefore, so long as we keep sampling the distance from the same probability density function, the variance of the samples will remain the same during the whole simulation. So this number, the variance of the result, is constant. That's a fixed number that doesn't change during the whole simulation. Nevertheless, our result is the mean value of our samples that we generate during the simulation. So uh, when we write the mean value on the axis it may fall close to the expectation value. So the expectation value is here and our and the mean value of our samples, all these samples will fall somewhere around the expectation value. So it may fall here for instance. So there is going to be some error in the mean value. So that is the difference between the mean value of our samples and the correct expectation value. If we repeat the simulation with another sequence of random numbers, that means if we select these random values differently from our probability density function, then the final mean value of our samples will contain a different error. So it will fall to another place, for instance here. If you repeat the simulation again with another sequence of random numbers, it may fall here, and then here. If you repeat the same simulation many many times, always with another sequence of random numbers, you will see that the distribution of these results, the mean values of our samples 
will have a distribution around the expectation value. So it's normal distribution. So now we already know how to calculate the variance that characterizes this distribution. We know that the variance of this mean uh, value of our result is equal to the variance of the random variable, the, the result that uh, we calculate, divided by the number of samples. So in other words, this means that the variance in the mean value of the result that we calculate decreases proportionally with the number of samples that we accumulate during the simulation. The number of samples. So if we, for instance, uh, collect 10 times more uh, values of the result that we want to calculate, the variance in the mean value of the samples will decrease 10 times as well. We can rewrite this result for the standard deviation as well. So we know the uh, variance is the square of the standard deviation. So I can rewrite this equation in this form. So I can write that the standard deviation of the mean value equals the standard deviation of the result divided by the square root of the number of samples. So the standard deviation in the mean value in the result is inversely proportional to the square root of the number of samples that I collect during the whole simulation. So that means if I want to reduce the standard deviation of the mean value of the result 10 times, I'll have to generate 100 times bigger number of the samples. So by collecting more samples during a single Monte Carlo simulation, we will improve the, uh, the standard deviation of this distribution of the mean values. So for instance, it will if we improve it considerably, then the results will be falling around the expectation value much closer and the variance of these samples will be smaller. Another thing that we need to learn is the calculation of the probability that the correct expected uh, result lies within a specific interval centered around the mean value that you calculate during the Monte Carlo calculation. Let me show you what I mean. So let's take the example of the distance the fission neutrons fly to the first collision. Uh, so let's assume that we have run a Monte Carlo simulation and we obtained a result, the mean value of the distance. Now I can design an interval around this mean value and the minus delta up to um, the plus delta. So the length of the inter interval is 2 delta. Now I don't know where the expectation value is positioned on this axis. It could be in, inside this interval or it could be outside. So I would like to know the probability that the correct expectation value, the result that I want to calculate, is somewhere within the interval that I designed here. If I could calculate the probability that the expectation value lies within this interval, then I could design this interval in such a way that it contains the correct expectation value with probability of 99% for instance, or any probability that I decide. Alright, so we want to calculate the probability that the expectation value is within the interval centered around the mean value and it has the 
length to delta. Now this delta uh, is a parameter of our choice, so, so it's up to me how big it is. Clearly if I choose a big uh, value of this delta parameter, then the expectation value of the result will uh, be inside this interval with a bigger probability than if I choose very small delta parameter. Now in order to progress further, we are going to take advantage of the fact that the probability that the expectation value lies within the interval centered around the mean value of the samples that we collected during Monte Carlo simulation, this probability is actually identical to the probability that this mean value of our samples lies within the same interval, which is of the same size, but centered around the expectation value itself. Let me justify this on an example. Uh, let's take the same problem as before. We are trying to calculate the distance, the fission electrons fly to the first collision. So let's say that we obtained a result from our Monte Carlo calculation, mean value of the samples, all the samples that we collected. So let's say that the mean value is here and uh, let's design a parameter. So let's pick some delta. So we have MD minus delta here and MD plus delta. So this is our interval and we are curious about the probability the expectation value lies within this interval. Now let's say that the correct expectation value is here. So this is the correct expectation value. Now I'm going to draw the interval around the expectation value, this interval. So it is the same size of 2 delta. So here it's the expectation value minus delta and the expectation value plus delta. Now you may notice that the expectation value is at certain distance from this interval which is centered around the mean value. So let's call it uh, distance L. At the same time the mean value is actually at the same distance from the interval which is centered around the expectation value. It's the same distance. Now when we run the Monte Carlo simulation and we obtain the result, the mean value, which is averaged over all the samples, it falls around the expectation value. So there is some probability that it will fall within the interval E minus delta and E plus delta. It must be the same probability that the expectation value lies within the interval centered around the mean value, simply because both intervals are of the same size and the distances are the same as well. Now we know that the mean value of our samples is distributed normally around the correct expectation value. We know the mean value is distributed normally around the expectation value and we can even estimate the variance of the mean value. So at this point we have all the information that we need in order to calculate the probability that the mean value lies within the interval centered around the expectation value. We simply integrate the probability density function over this interval centered around the expectation value. So we can try to calculate this area from the interval E minus delta till the interval E plus delta. The normal distribution is given by this famous formula 
in which uh, sigma is the standard deviation that we can estimate during the Monte Carlo simulation along with the expectation value. So we are going to integrate this function over the interval of the size to delta centered around the expectation value. So here is the integral. We integrate from the expectation value minus delta to the expectation value plus delta. The first step here is to take the advantage of the fact that the normal distribution is, is symmetrical with respect to the expectation value. So the function looks like this. It's centered around the expectation value. And we want to integrate this function over the whole interval. The expectation value minus delta till the expectation value plus delta. Now, because the function is symmetrical with respect to the expectation value, we can instead integrate the function only over half of this integral. So, for instance, we, we can integrate from the expectation value till the expectation value plus delta. So we can we can try to calculate this area and multiply it by the factor 2. So that is what we have done on the second line. Here we have the factor 2 and we have changed the lower limit from the expectation value minus delta till the expectation value. Next, let's substitute this term y minus the expectation value with a new quantity y prime so that is going to change the uh, limits over which we integrate so uh, these limits we have to subtract the expectation value from them therefore there will be zero here and the expectation value will disappear from the upper limit, so we will integrate from zero till delta. And uh, otherwise nothing else will change because the y prime equals dy. So uh, the prime sign is actually not here, so we can write it back so it doesn't confuse you. Unfortunately this is as far as we can uh, get with the analytical solution. There is no uh, better form. There is no simple analytical function as a solution to this integral. The, the whole term is known as the Gauss error function and it can be calculated numerically. The Gauss error function has of course been tabulated for uh, different arguments uh, for different ratios of these deltas and the sigmas. So delta, remember, this is the parameter we choose and sigma is the standard deviation of the mean value. So here we have the table of the Gauss error function evaluated for different ratios of delta and the standard deviation. So for instance, when uh, this ratio is 1, that means when we choose delta which equals the standard deviation of the mean value, then the value of the Gauss error function is 0.68, about. And we know this number represents the probability that the correct expectation value is within the interval centered around the mean value of our result with the um, lower bound m minus delta and the upper m plus delta. So uh, the probability is 68% approximately that the correct expectation value lies within this interval. Now let's take the example. Let's say that we run a Monte Carlo calculation for 
the distance of fission neutrons to the first collision and let's say that the mean value of the distance would be 10 centimeters and then we would estimate the standard deviation for the mean value at one centimeter so then typically people write the result in the form uh, such as this the distance equals 10 plus minus one centimeter and in this case they always assume that uh, the delta parameter here equals sigma so the ratio is one so by uh, this formulation they are giving you an interval 9 cm to 11 cm which will contain the correct expectation value with the probability of about 68%. Now if you wanted to have an interval of values that would contain the correct expectation value with a better probability, for instance uh, 99.7% so according to this table you would need uh, to increase the delta parameter to three sigmas so in this case we would have to write the uh, result as 10 plus minus 3 centimeters but then you need always to note that you assume uh, that your delta equals three sigmas otherwise people will assume that uh, this is your uh, standard deviation three centimeters so we are coming till the end of this mini lesson before uh, we finish let's consider this equation whether the error in the mean value that we calculate in our monte carlo simulation will always decrease as we collect more and more samples. Now we know that the variance, the variance in the mean value is decreasing, of course, with the number of samples, right? Because we have the number of samples in the denominator. Nevertheless, we do not know the correct value of the variance in the mean value and we do not know the variance in the uh, random variable that we are calculating. We can only make an estimation of this number. So we approximate this by our estimation of the standard deviation S of the random variable and then we divide by the number of samples. Now it's important to realize that this number, the estimation of the standard deviation contains some error. So as we sample more and more values of the result, this estimation does not necessarily need to always decrease. It may sometimes decrease, sometimes it may increase. So the real variance of the mean value uh, does always decrease as we collect more and more samples. However, its estimation may not decrease. If you evaluate this value after you generate a new sample, you, you may notice that sometimes it may jump up. So that's normal, there's nothing we can do about this. Now you need to realize that even when the uh, estimation of the standard deviation increases accidentally during the simulation, that doesn't mean that the error in the result, in the mean value, uh, is increased as well. You simply uh, have made you have collected more samples and based on that you have made better estimation of the real variance of the random variable that you are trying to calculate. Nevertheless, having said that, uh, we need to realize that the real error in the mean value uh, does not always decrease when we sample more values of the result. 
it is a random variable so uh, as you sample it it will fall around the expectation value and if you generate more samples you add them to the previous result you may expect that the mean value will move towards the expectation value but this is not guaranteed it may also move further from it uh, nevertheless if you do sample many more values to the result you may expect that the mean value of all the samples will uh, little by little approach the expectation value let me demonstrate this on an example i'm going to draw a plot i have the number of samples on the horizontal axis and then i have the error in the calculated mean value on the vertical one so here is the mean value of the result minus the expectation value of the result so if I calculated the mean value every time I generate a new sample then I could draw this plot right so you would probably expect that the error in the mean value would uh, approach zero as we collect more and more samples and that is of course a reasonable assumption however it can happen that it may converge like this right so so at first we have a positive error the mean value is bigger than the expectation value and then the error may become negative right and eventually it will approach zero so for whatever precision we want to achieve there will be a certain number of samples that we will have to collect but once we collect it we can achieve that precision so you can see that uh, there are certain moments during the Monte Carlo simulation when the mean value of the result that we calculate the mean value of all the samples accidentally equals the correct expectation value so, so it looks like the error is zero and then it increases again right so the mean value in, in, in this location is smaller than the expectation value so the error is negative here and then after collecting another amount of samples it it crosses the mean value crosses the expectation value again so uh, then the error is zero here again and then it increases again so it's important to realize here that these moments when the error is zero in the mean value these moments they are purely accidental and uh, during the Monte Carlo simulation we have no way of knowing when they occur or whether they occur at all so we cannot we cannot draw this plot during the Monte Carlo simulation because we don't know the expectation value if we knew the expectation value of the result well then we wouldn't need to run any simulation at all we would already have the result so we don't really know whether the error in the mean value decreases or whether it increases and how big it is so uh, all we can do is to estimate the standard deviation in the mean value that we calculate and based on that we can evaluate the probability that the expectation value lies within our interval of choice And that is all for now and I wish you have a nice day.